Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about some events in D.C. and a surprising, but not totally surprising, connection between Trump, Obama, Raskin, and McCarthy. And we'll go over the events as we know them in relation to a story that has kind of been underreported, given the severity of it. Okay, so former President Trump posted on social media what, it, what was said to be the address of former President Obama. A, uh, a man reposted it, shared it, and then is alleged to have gone to that neighborhood. Um, he had uh, a couple of weapons in his vehicle, according to the feds, and it appears that he intended on going through the sewers like a ninja turtle to go after the family. Um, okay, so Secret Service caught him after a, a foot chase, I believe, now, the suspect himself been living in his van. The feds were already looking for him in relation to activities on January 6th. Over the last week, there had been a number of social media posts that, well, let's just call them ominous from, uh, from the suspect, at least according to the documents filed by the feds. Okay, so he certainly appeared to uh, threaten the National Institute of Standards and Technology. I have no idea why. Um, there, there's probably some theory about that that I'm not aware of, but rest assured I'll be looking into it. Uh, Representative Raskin also got threats. Um, it appears that uh, during that period, the suspect entered an elementary school near Raskin's home. He also threatened McCarthy. So, what, uh, what can we take away from this? I mean, obviously, the severity of the issue is, is certainly there. The allegations are incredibly serious. Um, there were some statements about his van being self-driving, so he wouldn't be there when it went off. A whole bunch of really bad stuff. But that name McCarthy, one of these is not like the others, right? Frankenstein has completely lost control of his monster. The Republican Party absolutely does not have any control over that base. The danger that is posed by those that are more energized, more heavily influenced, it's not limited to, to Democrats. That seems pretty clear. Um, looking at the allegations, it certainly appears like basically any time in the last week or so, something could have set him off and uh, a tragedy ensued. There's a lot of anger there. And that anger is constantly being fed. The, the appetite that has been created in a substantial portion of the Republican base is something that it's going to be really hard to uh, make them lose their appetite. And the Republican Party has to actually lead. That They can't continue to condone the statements of the more radical members of their party because it is going to directly lead to tragedy. Um, 
I would imagine that this story is going to get more and more press as more details come out. Um, given the severity of it, I feel like a lot of the media was just like, oh, you know, it's one of those things where this, you know, random person, you know, tried to get it a former president, happens all the time, not a big deal. Based on the information that was uh, presented by the feds, it, it's not a situation like that. That's a little bit more serious, and it probably needs coverage uh, a lot more than it's getting. And given the wide, very wide um, selection of people or entities the person was angry with, it, it really seemed like somebody who had decided they were going to do something and was just looking for a reason. The, the people who stirred this up, the people who created this appetite, they, they're not, they are not the people that the energized base believes they are. It was just words. It's not going to be them that goes down for it. To them, it was all about tricking people to get a vote, nothing more. But that rhetoric, the inflammatory nature of it, it, it can cause problems. Um, so I, I would expect to see more about this story as it develops because I have a feeling it's going to get weirder. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.